I lost? This can't be happening. I was the chosen one. I'm supposed to be special. Damn it. It's not fair. Beat up and scratched, my textbooks soaked in air freshener, their pages scribbled all over, nasty, smelly, trash hit my back, laughter echoed around, mom cried when she saw my backpack, they're bullying you because we're poor, I'm so sorry, I hated the laughter. I hated getting hit with trash. I hated the pity. And most of all, I hated making the people who cared about me sad. I'm no worse than anyone else. So why me? The things I care about, I couldn't take it anymore. The laughter. The trash. The pity. I didn't want to be bullied ever again. I didn't want my mom to be sad anymore. I just wanted to be able to protect myself and what mattered to me. I wanted that special power. This memory, these feelings, wrong again, Subaru. I'm not pitying you. I'm just... sad. Gotta say, it was a shock hearing who the pack bearer of Wrath was. Same name as a student here who's been stuck in a coma. Who would have thought that he was a pack bearer all along? So, does that mean it was his spirit roaming through the first year building? I suppose it doesn't matter now, but I'm getting spooked just thinking about it. Perhaps his spirit was being transmitted, like a radio wave. But setting that aside... Why is his body unharmed? I was under the impression he was pushed out of a window. Huh. It doesn't seem like his powers can heal like Karamba's either. How odd. Hmm. Now, this is just a theory. But maybe he was dragged into the other world mid-fall and ended up meeting a monarch that way. Then, when he returned to the academy, he was already on the ground, avoiding the impact altogether. That'd be quite the coincidence, though. Well, like I said, it's just a theory. At the very least, when they brought him here, he didn't have any major wounds at all. There were cuts, burns, and, uh, strangulation marks. But I highly doubt any of that was related to the fall. So, he really was being bullied then. It's terrible that he had to go through all that. 
no surprise he'd want revenge for the suffering they caused him. Uh. That doesn't make it right. You can't just kill people, no matter what the reason. Well, whether he was justified or not is a bit irrelevant now. Guess he did try to kill innocent students, though. That's not revenge. That's just senseless slaughter. If anyone was justified, it was the Vice Prez and Kokoro for stopping him. It was the only way to bring some normalcy back to the Academy without any further casualties. Vice President, Kokoro, thank you both so much. You don't need to thank me. I was the one who asked for assistance in the first place. I should be thanking you. Vice President, President Hinata, I have a request. May I remain a member of the TSC a while longer? Of course! Right, Vice President? You have my gratitude. It's kind of nice having more friends around. Helps make the place feel a little more lively. But if you don't mind my asking, Kokoro, what made you want to continue being in the TSC? Well... What if I said, it's because I wanted to stay with you? Would that make you happy? Assisting you with your work is the closest I can get to the safety and security I want. That is all. Here's to our continued acquaintance. The main school building, the first year building, year building and the club building most of the mist in the Academy has been cleared out thanks to you and your friends only one of the seven pack bearers remains aside from Kokoro and Rio Taro of course I hope our lives will return to normal soon and when they do I'll finally take you around to wanted to talk to you alone. There. Long time no see. Ah, you remembered. What a good boy. There is a reason I called you here, of course. Mostly to check in and see how you're feeling. Kurama Hitotsubashi. Subaru Ikaria. Hayate Tsumabuki. Akane and Sumire Tono. Five packed bears. Five sets of broken dreams and shattered ideals. How does it feel knowing you've trampled their egos? Oh, but there's always... What about Ryotaro and Kokoro? Oh, that's right. You'll have to take care of them too. 
sooner or later. But keep telling yourself that you have no choice while you crush their ideals, egos, and desires. Well, I understand how you feel now. Thank you for answering honestly. You are practically a blank slate. So pure. I think that's your most endearing quality. I wish I could let you in on all the secrets that are holding everything together. But alas, you're just too pure in earnest. If you knew, danger could end up befalling you. And we wouldn't want you to get sullied now, would we? No, I'm afraid I need to keep these secrets to myself. For your own protection, of course. But... Hmm, you know, it shouldn't be long now. Just be patient. I'll be there soon enough. You're special, you know? And so terribly important. You are, after all, my sweet, adorable child. One, recurring twilight. Shinya. What is it? Would you be interested in wearing women's clothing? Uh-huh. I have an extra uniform you may borrow. What in the world are you talking about? Your features are appealing. 
I believe they would pair quite well with my uniform. Uh... It is best that you broaden your horizons while you are young. Now come, let us set sail. I'm not sure I like you very much. Thank you for coming all this way. I take it you've been cooperating with the Pact Bears of Sloth and Gluttony, correct? Oh, not at all. I was only seeking confirmation. You are a Pact Bearer too, after all. But don't forget, all of the Pact Bearer's ideals must be shattered in order to resolve the anomalies in the Academy including yours. I truly am sorry for pushing this on to you, but it's for everyone's sake, Miss Aikawa's especially. Your mission, your fate, bear them both as best you can. The mist has dissipated from the Academy's most pressing locations, thanks in no small part to the TSC. According to Shinya, the only areas it remains are the library, the archives, and the old dormitory. The mist at the old dormitory is most likely related to the Pact Bearer of Greed. Aside from you, there are three Pact Bearers remaining. But the one whose anomalies we were first aware of is the Pact Bearer of Greed. I don't know the specifics, but their authority seems to be more capable of distorting the world than any other. I ask that you prioritize that one first. I didn't even know we had one. She means the building. 
building in the back of the Memorial Garden. Memorial Garden? Memorial Forest, more like. But yeah, I know the building you're talking about. I remember seeing it a few times when I was wandering around. The old dormitory was closed off eight years ago. Though the garden is open to a few select clubs. The mist generally surfaces in areas around where an authority is used. It is a bit peculiar for there to be mist in such a remote location. I understand how you feel, but I saw it with my own eyes. The mist there is way worse than it was at the main building, the second year building, or any other place we've seen it. That pack bearer's authority distorts the world more than any other. It's the first one that appeared when all of this started. I wonder what kind of power they have. Be careful out there, okay? Don't you worry. <laughs> he doesn't need your help. One pack bear is enough as is. Sora asked me to help him, so I'll be the one going along. Vice President, I've finished dealing with the aftermath of all the incidents in the other buildings. I'd like to help you out, if you'll let me. I want to lessen your burden however I can. I would like to assist as well. I have managed to scale the mountain of work the TSC foisted upon me. This is the strongest pact bearer yet. I fear for your well-being. You're important to me, after all. Would putting it that way be enough to convince you? Frivolity aside. I do not wish for anything to harm you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Metaphorically, that is. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate all of you being there for my brother. <laughs> Hope, sloth, gluttony, faith. Four ends assembled at Vanity's Gate. The road now diverges. A fork in the road. Take care, for the line can no longer be towed. Yeah. In all my time aiding your cause, I've gotten used to your grabby claws. Vanitas? Your every word I have taken heed. You plan to fight the Pact Bearer of Greed. No authority truly outstrips all the rest. Even so, this will still prove a difficult test. Do you know what powers they have, Mr. Bunny? Well, naturally, of course I do. But surely... You don't expect me to tell you. There's a limit to how much I can interfere. Plus, it's more entertaining to be cavalier. So in other words, you're not gonna help. <laughs> be well prepared if you hope to live. That is all the advice that I can give. You've a great many friends, and I'm sure it's much fun. But bear in mind that you can only take one. Roaming the mist with a large coterie can end up tremendously risky, you see.
angel, princess of purity. My healing hair, it's rubby. If you want to pet me, just give me some grass. Uh, uh, what the hell was that? My head is hop, hop, hopping. I feel like I've heard that song before, but I can't put my finger on it. Isn't that the opening theme of a popular cartoon? That white rabbit keychain Chio has on her is from the same show, isn't it? I think it's called Injection Angel Brabby. Wow! You really know your stuff, Shinya! The girls in my class used to sing it a lot. I've seen that show before, but I don't remember the melody being so disturbing. <laughs> Only so many packed bearers yet remain. You used to be empty, just filler and fluff. But don't get to thinking it's nearly enough. Before you take on the packed bearer of greed, I'll grant one last chance to revise your creed. Desires are what shape your ego, they say. So answer my questions and do not delay. How would you feel if your darling pet cat Show somebody else over you. Question two. Two of your friends ask you to hang out. Which do you think is the better route? The one you find carnally attractive? Or the one who... Question three. What would you do with this fact you uncover? Your friend has been secretly meeting your lover. Question four. Would you ever borrow a demon's might to achieve your goals at the cost of what's right? Question five. If a video of someone feasting were shown, would you wish you had some of your own? Question six. Would you get angry if your friend took your phone and made your icon something you would bemoan? Question seven. You're in your first match of a round robin tourney. How will you prevent an early end to your journey? Question eight. At your friend's house, their mom makes you far too much food. Do you eat a question nine? Would you train your strengths in lieu of your flaws or compensate for them with effort and cause? Question 10. Would you call yourself a reliable soul? The kind who would thrive in a leader? Question 11. Would you press a button that wiped out your life if it let you start over without any strife? Question 12. Have you ever had the intrusive thought that the popular kid should die and rot? Question 13. If a teacher was scolding your friend, would you defend them to the end? Question 14. Do you start a task but get so fixated that your sleeping schedule is devastated? Question 15. How would you react to a verbal assault over something that wasn't even your fault? Question 16. Could you hear someone's story with a willing ear if the ending were painfully, obviously clear? Question 17. Are you so firm in your own sense of right that you censure all in your line of sight? Question 18. Your close pal's girlfriend admits she likes you. And as it turns out, you fancied her too. Do you take the girl away from your friend, knowing their heart it would surely rant? Question 19. How do you feel when you see a stranger get wrapped up in social media danger? Question 20. During a club or committee affair, would you try harder if your crush was there? 
Question 21. The person who was your rock in life has died. How do you react to this sudden blind side? Question 22. You and your partner have dated for years, but the spark is gone and you're bored to tears. Question 23. Do you hate when your friends steal the show with their boasting and braggadocio? Question 24. You've broken something important to you, but repairing it costs a small fortune or two. You could just replace it at reasonable cost. Do you go and repair it? Question 25. Have you ever gotten so mad at a game? Question 26. You are hungry in the dead of night. Do you get up and have a question 27? You're in a group project that's going awry. Do you think all the rest are the reason why? That perhaps they should have asked you for help or that things would be fine if you did it yourself? Question 28. If you devoted yourself to live streaming fame, could you get a million subscribers to your name? Question 29. How would you feel if your friend got a job and their salary made you look like a slob? Question 30. Say you scored 99 points on a test. Would you feel happy? Question 31. Your best friend is solely to whom you confide, an embarrassing secret you're trying to hide. What do you do when the whole class finds out, which your friend claims to know nothing about? <laughs> it seems your desires are still rather faint. You've limited them under much self-restraint. Your ego is formed by confronting desire. Perhaps letting loose more will help fan that fire. Have you noticed that some of the questions composed had no desires in the way they were posed. The questions in question were intended to scope your spiritual kinship with faith, love, and hope. Desires can make one feel greatly empowered, but so too can one become wholly devoured. Should you use them to bolster your faith and your hope, they can turn out quite useful and broaden your scope. But be it for yourself, or a person, or thing, a hope without love will do nothing but sting. Your hope, faith, and love are exceedingly low. You hold nothing dear, and you live as you go. At times it may seem that you seek your own ruin, though indulging in pleasure is only human. But when you do, Kokoro. Get ready. Together as one. Commencing.
Here I go. Away with you! The madness engulfs me. Annihilate! Get ready! Worthless... <laughs> so naughty... Worthless scum! <laughs> so naughty... Together as one! <laughs> so naughty... Leave it to you. How is this? 
skills. Time for a bull fruitless. Get ready. Take this. <laughs> so naughty. After you. Leave it to me. You're open. Worthless scum. I leave it to you. Let's go, Kokoro. Get ready. Together as one. <laughs> so naughty. Madness. Take this. I shall it. I will support. Oh, detestable. Want to play? How? Payback. Don't bother. So this is madness. Counterattack! No, it's 
escape. Null and void. At your command, my lord. Go, Kokoro! Get ready! Mm. Worthless! <laughs> so naughty! Yes. 
useless scum. Heal. Get ready. I leave it to you. Yes. Annihilate! Here I go. You're open! Worthless scum! The madness!
Here I go. I leave it to you. Yes. Oh! <laughs> 